Well, the epic lies and destruction of the He-Man and the Masters of the Universe continues on. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, share this video. And we do really appreciate it. And we appreciate those of you who have subscribed. Uh, we get, got a little bit of a boost this week on um, YouTube and on BitChute. And then we thank those of you who have subscribed. We thank, thank you very, very much. So let's get into this. So we've discussed before the lies of Kevin Smith, who basically is responsible for the new Masters of the Universe. And it's not He-Man in the Masters of the Universe. This is Masters of the Universe Revelations, which is coming out in a few days when this um, video drops. And uh, basically, you know, we were, we were told, oh, Kevin Smith was a fan, that this is a sequel to the original series, that nothing was going to be changed, that don't worry about it. Uh, it's basically going to focus on He-Man. No, it's not going to be Tila. We're not going to change anybody in the series. Nothing on that. And we found out all of it's a lie. Plain and simple lies. We know Kevin Smith, and we and we have it in four. As everyone said, we have it in 4K on his TV show. He didn't care about Masters of the Universe. No love for He-Man. I just, I, I just sometimes I know, but I have no love for He-Man either. He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. He did not like it at all. Um, we know that basically Tila is going to be the the main emphasis of the series. Uh, we had. Uh, changes in King Grayskull that we had race swap on King Grayskull and another character and we were told there was going to be no changes on the character and they lied. Now what else could they've done? Well let's let's take it for example here. Uh, we There was a video Nerdist put out interviewing Kevin Smith and the cast, the voice cast of the series and the things Kevin Smith said in there is basically very shocking and disappointing showing more and more issues that are going to be on they started with orco and saying that orco wasn't that popular going through the show and going like look orco you know it's 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 not even 50 50 it's like <laughs> 75 25 75 percent of people just did not like the character mm -hmm. and like oh he ruined the show for me and shit like that no he wasn't that popular. we're going to make him more popular on there orco Orko was not hated in the original series. He was not hated. He was not the Jar Jar Binks of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. A lot of people were, were very upset when he was excluded from the movie. So that shows you right there, you know, no Orko, no Orko in the movie. And he said, oh, we're, we're going to be changing him. And there we go again. They're going to change him. He's going to be, you know... You know much stronger better faster and then one of my favorite characters evil lynn evil lynn which you know one thing about me one thing you'll learn about me is when it comes to stories the villain the villain makes the story you know, that's the, the whole key of the story. If it wasn't for the villain, the hero would be doing nothing. The hero would be like sitting back like, eh, what am I doing? The vi I love villains. Whether it's Dark Side, whether it's Apocalypse, whether it's Magneto, um, Skeletor, uh, Evil Inn. And what they're doing to Evil Inn is now they said, well... You know, they're going to go through changes. Her and Teela are going to go through changes, he says. Yep. And have to redefine themselves. And, yep. you know, Teela goes hard-hearted for a while and then slowly kind of comes back. Whereas Evelyn gets soft-hearted until she kind of gets dressed. And she's going to become a more soft-hearted, sort of a Loki type of guy. He threw in that Loki thing. And those of you who have watched Loki, you've seen what they did. They've cut Loki's balls off pretty much in the... Uh, Loki TV series that's on Disney Plus, which was horrible, horrible. And uh, basically, they're doing the same thing to Evil Lynn. Oh, she's gonna be so fine. No, she 
is a villain. She is evil. She, there's a reason why her name is Evil Lynn. Because she's bad. Come on, really? Really, Kevin Smith? You're going to tell me that basically that you have a series now that it basically does not, is not a sequel to the original He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, that it is something else. Now, the animation does look good. You can make it up. But if the writing is horrendous, you know, fans are going to just, like, go away from this. And the toy company, you know, if you sell anything, it'll be for a short period of time, and then it will stop. Because people are tired of this. We are tired of what you're doing. I mean, we have a Silverhawk series that's, that's being um, premised right now. We had a story about that recently. And, you know, I can't trust that. I can't really trust that as well. We've seen every reboot that has come out has not worked well. Or has just been total garbage. You can't go against what the lore is of the series you can't take away what the series is and change it to what you think is better see this is why anime and manga are doing very well in this in in the west because basically they don't they don't do this crap one thing about anime and manga, there's something for everybody. Somebody, uh, Chuck Dixon said, hey, listen, I watch the fishing ones. I watch the golf ones. There's no demons or sexuality or nothing like that. It's just playing golf and fishing. That's what it is, an anime about that. You know, there are basketball ones. There's volleyball ones. There are baseball ones. You know, there's a lot of sports ones. There's something for everybody. But see, the mentality is, is that, oh, we have to change this. Because basically there isn't something for everybody. That basically there's not enough uh, representation. Which is bullshit. Which is bullshit. You know, anyone who tells you that the industry is not well representative is lying to you. There have been people well representative for decades. Whether it's been film. Whether it's been television. The shows themselves, the cartoons, the anime, it doesn't matter what they say. It Basically, we have had representation for many, many years. Even going further back, you know, they say, well, you know, we need more women directors. There were women directors all the way back to the early days of film. You have to look at that. And they said, oh, well... We've, you know, this particular person is the first, you know, black man to have a studio, their own studio. No, nope, that's wrong. That's incorrect. You go all the way back to the time of King Kong, the original King Kong, that one of the actors there who played one of the natives, he went off, took his money and built his own mini, stu his own mini film studio. You know, everybody thinks that, you know, it's never happened before. That it, it doesn't happen. It's happened. A lot of glass ceilings were broken many decades ago. And it's been improved ever since. We have been improving. Now, in the last several years, all these insane people have taken us back, are just rewinding the clock backwards. You know, because they think, that, oh, we're doing better for everybody. No, you're making it worse for everybody. You know, for Netflix to green like this, is it's just, it's stupidity. You know, it, it, you know, it's, you know, you, you have so many people that have lied. And it's not only Kevin Smith. Other people on the staff has lied. They said, well, we have it this way. No, it's, th then later on they said, no, it's this way. When you're telling us on camera, on camera 4K, that yes, it's going to be, you know, a sequel to the series. And then later on, you come back in another, another interview and it says, no, I'm sorry. It is not a sequel to the series. It's something different. 
That's very, very disappointing. As a person who watched He-Man when he was when he was younger, that, that just really upsets me. And you know, there are gonna be those who say, well, it's not for you. Now who the fuck is it for? Because th there's no listing of what, you know, who these things are for. I enjoy a good animated series or a good anime series or anime movie or animated movie. You know, Tarantino was right. The I ideology has taken over this entire industry. The only ones left are the independents left. I could understand why he's retiring. He ain't retiring. He wants to go out with a with one more in a big bang that he's done on himself. It's because basically the ideology of Hollywood has damaged the artistic value of everything. Movies, animation, their art, their artwork, and should be treated as artwork. Because basically, when you look into the perspectives on how good some some animated series and movies, you know, you got movies like uh, Bashki's Fire and Ice. Um, you got Heavy Metal, which is which is just basically one of the masterpieces on there. You got Akita from Japan. That's another masterpiece. You know, you don't get things like this. And the thing about it is, here, here here's here's the problem on the people on the opposite end that says we need we need to stop this. A lot of those people will say, well, you know, we some of these movies we can't make today. Bullshit. I call bullshit on that. If you have the will and the means, because today it's so easy to make your own product these days. You have free editing systems on there. Cameras are cheaper than ever. If you can use your own cell phone to make a movie, the quality, of, like especially on an Apple phone, you know, the quality is excellent. You could shoot an entire... People have shot films on, off their cell phones. Special effects, graphics, and all that is very simple to do. Uh, Star Wars Theory is going to be doing two more of that Darth Vader movie. It's going to cost them about $350,000, and I can understand that, but for two movies, three, two mini movies, $350,000, a lot cheaper than the millions upon millions that is spent on junk like Black Widow, Fast 9, um, Space Jam, you know, there were a lot of movies during the pandemic that did very well. And and these were small independent movies because they hit the drive-ins. They didn't have a big they didn't have a big push. A movie called The Wretched, which was shown in some of the drive-ins during that time period, um, came out release date was about May 1st, 2020. It was a budgeted for $66,000. $66,000 made 4.345 million dollars in the box office. 4.3 million worldwide. That's not bad for a scene. You know, but you say, well, that's not a lot. It's not 100 million, stuff like that. No, it's not. No, it's not. But you look to the perspective that it cost $66,000 to make. And basically, it did excellent. And I always tout to this. You know what the most, one of the most successful films of all time is? The Blair Witch Project. A movie that cost three hundred thousand dollars, grossed two hundred and forty-eight million dollars. Two hundred and forty-eight million dollars from a three hundred thousand dollar film. This shows you it can be done. This movie was nineteen ninety-nine, at a time, at a time that special effects, move cameras and stuff like that was still growing. That it was basically, you know, it was much more expensive then to make a film than it is today. The one thing, the only thing we have in lockdown to decrease the price, but still it is much less today, is animation. Because it takes, sometimes it takes a lot of people to do an animated series. It's not, it's not one person can sit there and draw. But there have been some people that have done some mini series 
out there on YouTube and other streaming plat streaming platforms, social media platforms that have d done mini stuff. You know, constantly. Some of it's basic, it's simple. You know, like happiness and happiness and cyanide. And then you have others that are more complex. Like Hell of a Boss from Vizzy Pop, which has a great... If you haven't seen Hell of a Boss, catch that right now. It's very good. Very, very good in the animation and stuff like that. It's not, nice, nice shorts. Not for kids, first of all. Not for kids, if, you know. For adults, yeah. And that's the other thing. A lot of these people that go like they tout that they say cartoons are just for kids or animated series are just for kids or anime. Just, or, no. It is another device to tell a story. You know what was a great part in Kill Bill? The first one was the backstory of the Lisa Liu character. And it was an an in anime. They did it as an anime. And that was a good way of telling a story. And it's not the first time a movie or a TV series used animation or an anime to tell a backstory. So when you say that, hey, yeah, it's for kids only. No. No. That's incorrect. Can a horror film be for kids? Yeah, sure. Is a horror film for adults? Yeah, sure. Is a drama for kids? Can be too. And also for adults. It doesn't matter whether it's animated, live action, stuff like that. It is programming. It is a story. And then you look back to what's happening now that you're telling a story that was a great story back then. And now you're telling it in a way where it's like, yeah, we're going to soften the villain a bit. We're going to take the villain and give them a... You know, I, I get pissed off on this. I didn't really, you know... Thanos was okay for me in Endgame and stuff like that, but still was missing a lot. What they did to Galactus in that Fantastic Four movie was atrocious. What they did to Venom, they made him an anti-hero, which is more really a villain. I prefer him as a villain. The same thing with Magneto. Magneto's a villain. You know, he has his agenda. He, you know... And basically, it's that they steer away from these things because they know that certain characters have certain controversial things that are going on. You know, when you look at something like Apocalypse and Magneto, they just want to take, you know, they just want to wipe out the people who don't have mutant powers. That they want the mutants to be mutants and no one without powers exists. And that's sort of, you know, where we're headed for. And I can't even say that because unfortunately YouTube doesn't let me say that, but I'll say it like the Razis. See, when people says, you know, hey, listen, we have to have diverse, you know, we have to talk about racism and stuff like that. We've already had it in the comics. We've already had it for decades in the comics. Those stories have been told. We need new stories. We need new revolving stories, new characters. We need new characters. We need to move away from the superhero comics. You know, next year we're getting a spy uh, anime next year. We already got spy manga that's doing very, very well. You know, we get horror mangas that do very well. And then we got new animes coming. You know, Demon Slayer is one of the top anime and mangas. Selling out everywhere. What's the story? It's about demons. It's about a boy boy who loves his sisters, trying to cure him, cure her, excuse me, from, from being a demon, and goes off hunting other demons, looking for the demon that did it to her. That's a good story. That's a really good story. If you haven't caught Demon Slayer yet, why are you waiting? Don't wait. Because right now, it's hard to get the mangas. Very hard to get the mangas. we got another story on that coming soon. So, you reached this part of the video. Thank you for tuning in. We'll continue to monitor this. Because, you know, there are going to be more lies. The lies, lies, still continuing. 
So don't forget to hit that subscribe, like, share this video. We will see you on the next video. Thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to check us out on our other social media platforms, including Odyssey and BitChute, where we do have exclusive content on those platforms as well. So we'll see you next time. Bye.